Hi, I'm Cora Freyer, painter and illustrator, currently here at my studio, sitting on the left side of the couch, and I'm here with Caitlin Rose. I'm a dance instructor and choreographer. For this artist residency, I'll be creating a short dance film on religious trauma. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into Let's it. Let's get into that. Why? So, like, I don't ever dance in my own pieces, first of all, because they're challenging. Second of all, it <laughs> I've danced in two of my own pieces and both times it was really hard because you can't just like sit back and watch something. You have to record yourself doing a video and the video never looks as good as like what you were feeling when you were dancing. You can only see like a 2D image and it just... That would be or is well. the perfect answer to what you struggle with in your work. Yeah. Um, I definitely struggle with feeling like my work is too simple mm -hmm. because I create like solos and then I kind of manipulate them into working for a huge cast. So I can't see like patterns and pathways the same way that some dancers do. I can't picture things like How that. How do you think? Um, I think, <laughs> I think in small picture, I think in like solos, so like single person dancing, like I always have a concept, I see like small okay. movements. Like so many things, you have to be a composer, you have to be a dancer, you have to be a choreographer, and you have to be a director, that's a lot to take on. <laughs> it is. You know, that's interesting, because that uh, feels like it's almost this little bit of an echo of the ballpoint drawings, because mm -hmm. I kept for trying for the longest time to be a very detail-oriented, almost developed like an architectural uh, drawing style uh -huh. where it's almost going into like a product design sketch for example, yeah. everything's very accurate, straight lines, mm -hmm. fine lines, you know, th that to me seemed like a high art uh, in a way, something that didn't come naturally to me and mm -hmm. whenever I was trying to do this I would struggle so much and then I would uh, beat myself up about it also. Yeah. And then eventually though, I kind of thought about, okay, so what happens if instead of really trying to draw the straight line, there is no such thing. And I'll, I'll draw the line and I'll see where it's going. And then I'll look at it and what can I do with it next? Mm -hmm. So then there is no wrong. So if I were to embrace that flaw, mm -hmm. like where's that gonna take me? It's just kind of a matter of like continually creating and just trying things, and if they don't work, just throwing them out. Right. Because I think that that's part of being an artist, is yeah. you, you make work, and then you can't get attached to it because you have to just be like, okay, this isn't this isn't right. And you have to know, like, to trust that intuition, because I think sometimes our ego gets in the way and is like, mm, yeah. but I put so much work into yeah. this one thing, and, and then my gut says no, so we just have to cross it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah paint, paint over, over it. it. Yeah. yeah. As far as your stills go, how particular are you about what goes into them and like where things are placed on the canvas? So very much so. Being authentic, portraying something that, you know, would stimulate others to form some sort of opinion in okay. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then also think about what you put on the canvas, where do you put it, uh, the colors that you're choosing. All of this is uh, language those are all choices mm -hmm. so once you're aware of them what do you want to create with it with uh, still lives i was like lucky to be able to always go to the art institute mm -hmm. and just look at things okay so you're surrounded by it yeah art. and then i was able to look at pieces that i would maybe instinctively not necessarily pay attention to there's one artist his name is uh, lautrec he places his uh, objects in zigzag lines almost mm -hmm. and then each object has some sort of relationship to the other either in shape and color or in meaning mm -hmm. and I'm still interested in trying to bring that language back then also um, trying to take new objects into my painting like, do you think about your intention before or after i always think about the purpose sometimes it happens that i'll see an object and i try to figure out why do i keep going back to it like why is it visually interesting it's telling a story to me you know mm -hmm. sometimes if it's just shampoo bottles by chance then i try to figure out oh why 
why is this appealing? Oh, you know, maybe it's a limited palette and the possibility to tell stories with it. Mm -hmm. So I like that. It's almost like a game to myself because okay. I can make up stories, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can convey meaning in them mm -hmm. that means something to me, which maybe somebody who's going to look at it will get it. And it's mm -hmm. almost like, oh, I clearly communicated this. Yeah. Or it's not even happening that other person is going to put so much meaning in that, which is great because then it's also another news story. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that part. Yeah. It's kind of not yours anymore sure, to yeah. say, like, here's my interpretation. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You, know, you want people to look at it and draw from, draw like their own conclusions. Uh, what brought you to dancing? You went to school for it, right? Yes. I went to um, Western Oregon University. I got my Bachelor of Science in Dance, and I have three awards in academic excellence wow. for dance, two for choreography, and one for dance history. But yeah, I'm definitely grateful for where did you draw your inspiration from? My own healing journey. I think that COVID, it like really pushed me to sit with myself and decide what was important to me and look into my own spirituality too and um, kind of repair that because it had been like so damaged growing up uh, in such a like conservative evangelical household. Interesting how your work right now, in one way, is completely contemporary. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the problems that you are talking about are as old as humanity. So so that project, in a way, is finished. But then where do you want to take it further? Do you want to take it further? I do. I um, like to make like a whole show of it. Whole other choreographers, other artists make it an interdisciplinary experience for the audience. Um, maybe have like live painters and live poets that kind of thing all talking about like religious trauma and um maybe like loss of bodily autonomy how important in this is the uh audience i i want my audience to feel like they are seen and they are heard like i'm hoping to do kind of the same for like, people who watch this as what, you know, like, God is Grey and like, you know, uh, a couple other like books and things that I've read did for me. Um, I also heard you talk earlier about a GoFundMe page, what does that entail? My costs, a, a bit about me and like my story and why I'm making this and uh, have like basically employed a few local artists to um, create a poem for me, um, a cello piece, and then I'm also hiring a videographer and editor. And then I have a cast of eight dancers who I'd like to support financially. Um, and I would also, you know, love to support myself <laughs> financially sure. through this because it's been a lot of work. So to what extent did the artist residency play a role? Um, the artist residency really just like kicked me into gear with yeah, it. Because mm -hmm. something that I realized during the residencies, actually, mm -hmm. I'm a great artist. Yes, you absolutely Thank are. Thank you, that's not what I'm saying. But, but there's definitely room for improvement in regard to commercializing. I mean, that's what I'm going to focus on. I don't think we've talked about your start. In painting. In painting, or yeah. art. I grew up with little TV, and whenever there was TV, it was almost this really exciting medium mm -hmm. and I would just, you know, watch these little like uh, hand-drawn cartoons from the Ukraine or Poland, mm -hmm. that's kind of what was on. And, yeah. and I was very much intrigued by the whole idea of how to create this own little world for you and like mm -hmm. how to tell a story and then colors i almost get to a point where i think colors look delicious you're a classically trained painter did you ever work in like other mediums yeah so uh first i went to the art institute of chicago where it wasn't necessarily a classical training you could if you wanted to but i took a break in between and uh decided that i wanted to be a little bit more like go into depth of yeah classical training led me to uh pennsylvania academy of the fine arts okay so there was a lot of sculpture anatomy drawings so i wouldn't draw you right now i would mm -hmm. basically draw your skeleton or your okay. muscles yeah sudden i would see okay there are my limitations 
or this is something that I really don't care for. I thought oh, yeah. I would, but I really don't. Mm -hmm. So that was a good experience. And what you can do once you know a certain formula of how you know this is how you draw an apple. It's like okay, you do it a couple of times, and it looks like an apple. But then it's also for me after a while, it's like this is boring. Like, yeah. Now I need to. There needs to be more stimulation. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's how I ended up drawing very abstracted landscapes yeah. at this point too. Yeah. Do you ever feel like your your training like ever holds you back a little bit? Because I think for me, like being technically trained in ballet, sometimes it's hard to break the the rules. I guess. Yeah. Definitely. To a point where it was almost debilitating really? because yeah. it took me a while to get back into art because of that. Because mm -hmm. at some point I was so fed up with, you know, the stereotype of how an artist had to, has to behave. I mean, there's all these like <laughs> rules and regulations yeah. in a world that isn't supposed to have them almost, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And that is maybe the idea with the whole straight line thing. Like mm -hmm. how to do things perfectly. I, I mean, there's like a difference between craft and creativity. Yes. That's fun in one way, but then all of a sudden you, yeah, it's hard to sort of veer off track and yeah. be okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then also know that there are a lot of people that will probably judge you by these all standardized methods, really. Mm -hmm. That's interesting in itself. Your influence is like, is it about like seeing certain artists or art and then kind of like, extracting from that or is it more about like how you're trained? And there are certainly a lot of artists where I either think the technique that they use are, is like lovely and I would love to know, like I have admiration, it's almost poetic, mm -hmm. right? Because they, asse they assemble something and the way they did it work. Yeah. Like a lot of times I think it's really fascinating how, for example, like there's one artist, Serov, the Serov mm -hmm. Russian painter, yeah. just needs to use like five brush strokes and he describe something beautifully, but, and that really, I think, takes a lot of skill. Like, yeah. I admire that. Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie have been huge influences no on, like, my com comedic pieces, and, like, wow. because they have such good, like, physical humor, like, right. I, it's just, like, the feeling I get when I see them, and then I'm like, I want to recreate that, but give it to someone else. Another form of media, what would it be? I mean, I would really like to try more digital art. A hard, I feel like a dinosaur coming into, you know, media age. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, there's so much out there. I think it'd be fun to just do it. You have to suck at something before it, you can get good. Yeah. Did it. Cut. Yeah, I think we're